so our first lesson that we're going to do is lesson 1-2. We're actually skipping lesson 1-1. Um, so we're starting out with solving equations, which you've done in previous classes. So this is kind of to practice different types of solving. Our essential question is how do you create equations and use them to solve problems? So the first example, and you can see this in the notes, is we want to find the value of x in the equation 2 times x plus 4 divided by 3 minus 8 equals 32. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through this in two different ways. So what you need to know is you can use either method, whichever one you prefer, as long as you're following the rules of algebra, either way works. Okay, so the first example, so we're going to do 2 times x plus 4 over 3 minus 8 equals 32. Okay, so the first way that we can do this is we can multiply everything by 3. And when I mean everything, I mean this side we're going to multiply by 3, and this side we're going to multiply by 3. So over here, this 3 and this 3 are going to cancel out, so we're going to be left with 2 times x plus 4 minus, but then we have the 3 that we can't forget about, so 3 times 8 is 24, equals 32 times 3, which is 96, okay? So that's our first step. It got rid of the fraction. So that's one way that we can do this. So then my next step is I'm going to take the 2 and distribute it. So 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 4 is 8. Minus 24 equals 96. Okay, next I'm looking for like terms. So I've got an 8 and a negative 24. So remember that minus sign in front of it means it's negative. So 8 minus 24 is going to give me negative 16. So that's 2x minus 16 equals 96. Now I am going to add 16 to both sides. So that gives me 2x equals 112. And then my last step is I'm going to divide by 2 ran out of space, so let's go up here, 2x equals 112, divide both sides by 2, and I get x is 56. Okay, so now I'm going to erase this, and we're going to do the whole thing a different way. So let's get rid of this. And you have both of these on the notes that you can refer to. Okay. So, same problem. But this time, we're not going to multiply by 3 first. The, the first step here, we're going to get rid of that minus 8. So we're going to do the opposite, which is plus 8. So now I have 2 times x plus 4 over 3 equals, those are going to cancel out, equals 40. Now that I got rid of the 8, now I'm going to get rid of the divided by 3. So we know opposite of divided by 3 is times 3. So we're going to multiply both sides by 3, so that cancels those. So I have 2 times x plus 4 equals 120. Now we're going to divide by that 2 out front, or we could distribute either way. So I get x plus 4 is equal to 60. And then my last step, again I ran out of space, x plus 4 equals 60. We're going to subtract 4 from both sides, and we get 56. So you'll see both ways we got 56. You can use either method when you are solving. Okay, here's the next one. Example 2 says the sum of three consecutive integers is 132. What are the three integers? So remember an integer, just to review that, is a positive or negative whole number. So 3 is an integer, so is negative 4. But 2.5 is not an integer. Okay, so consecutive means in a row. So like 1, 2, 3 are consecutive. So I'm going to say that x is my first number. And so then we have to think what would be my next number. 
So my second number would be whatever number x is plus 1. That's going to be my second number. And then whatever my third number is, it's going to be my original number plus 2 would be my third number. So if you're talking about like even numbers, that means it would have to be like 2x or 2x plus 1 to make it odd or something like that. So now I want to take my three integers that I have over here, x, x plus 1, and x plus 2, and I want to take the sum of them. So remember, sum means we're adding. So x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2, and all of those together equal 132. Okay, so now over here we have parentheses, but we can combine like terms. I have 1, 2, 3x's. So I can write that as 3x, and then I have 1 plus 2, so that'd be 3x plus 3 equals 132. So now I have a two-step problem. I want to subtract the 3 from both sides and we get 3x equals, and that would be 129. Then we're going to divide both sides by 3, and we get 43. So if we go up here to kind of the little cheat sheet that we made in the corner, so that means that our first number is 43, which means our next number would be 44, and our third number would be 45. And so it's always good to go back and check. Add up 43 plus 44 plus 45 and make sure they equal 132. Okay, moving on. So this is, on our notes page, this is example 3. But um, in the book, this is example 4. So I just want to show you where that came from. So it says, four friends use an online code to get discounts on concert tickets. They spent $312 for the four tickets. What was the price of one ticket without the discount? So we have to figure out how we set this up. So if you look over here at the table, it says that the discount was $15, okay? And so each ticket had a discount of fourteen or $15 before we found the total. So we could say, if we say P is the price of the ticket, minus the 15, so that would be the price of one ticket, but we have four of them. So we're going to take that value, and we're going to put a four out front, because there's four tickets that were discounted at that $15. So then the total came to 312. So then we would just solve this. Okay, we could do it two ways. First, you could either start out by dividing by the 4 to get rid of the 4, or I think more often than not, I distribute. So I do 4 times P minus 60 equals 312. So then I would add 60 to both sides. So then those would cancel. I get 4P equals, and then this would be 372. And then I would divide both sides by 4, and I get the price of the ticket was $93. So if you look at the notes page, I did it a little bit differently. I divided by that 4 first. So those are two different ways to solve the same problem and get the same answer. Okay. And here's our last example. So this is a work and time problem. So if you see in the notes, I want you to think of the fact that distance equals rate times time. So that means that time is equal to, if we are solving for t, we divide both sides by r, since by the rate. So we're going to use that idea with this problem. So it says Latanya will walk her bike from her house to the bike shop, which is one and a half miles from her house, to get the bike fixed. She expects to wait 30 minutes for the repair. Then she will ride her bike home. Can she be home in one hour? So we're trying to solve for time, okay? 
So we're going to set this up for time walking plus time at the shop plus time biking will equal the total time. Okay, so again, if we think up here, time is distance divided by the rate. So the rate would be like the miles per hour. So if we start with walking, it says that she, she's going to walk her bike from her ha house to the bike shop, which is one and a half miles from her house. So our distance is 1.5. And the, the speed she's walking, we can find on the chart right here, is at three miles per hour. So one and a half miles, three miles per hour. So that's our distance divided by the rate. So her time shopping, we know from the problem here, it says she was going to wait 30 minutes at the shop. So we can say 0.5, because we're dealing with hours here. So 0.5 time at the shop. And then biking, again, we're going to use this up here. So we're going to say distance, again, is going to be 1.5. But this time her rate is faster. Her rate is right here, 10 miles per hour. And that's going to equal our total T. Sometimes your variable, variable might be over in the left side and sometimes it's going to be on the right side. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all these and type them into our calculator. 1.5 divided by three. So if we get our calculator. So 1.5, oops, 1.5 divided by 3 is 0.5 plus 0.5 plus 1.5 divided by 10 is 0.15. So then if we add all those together, we get 1.15 is equal to time. So if we think about this, this is 1.15 hours. So that's how long it's going to take her total. So the question was, can she be home in one hour? Our answer would be, no, she cannot. Okay, so those are the examples. Send me an email or ask questions if anything doesn't make sense or if you need more examples to go by. Thanks.